Words matter a lot. Whether you're the founder of a billion dollar startup or you're a white collar desk monkey huffing away in the basement at Citigroup, just trying to get by. No matter where you're at, how you communicate is going to dictate how far you go. Let's discuss. How's it going? I'm Justin, Justin Khan from Justin.tv. What's up guys, it's Justin Khan, your favorite founder's favorite founder, back at it again. Today, I'm gonna do a video on communication. Believe it or not, I used to be pretty terrible at communicating. It's a skill that took me years and years to develop, but people don't see that. They see me now and they think, man, that guy is an amazing communicator. Effective communication is actually one of the most valuable skills that you can build. And it's also something that people don't spend enough time developing. Here are some lessons that I learned uh, on my path to becoming an effective communicator. Number one, be authentic. This is probably one of the most difficult skills to develop because most people violate this rule all the time without even thinking about it. Human beings are very, very, very good at detecting all the minute details within social interactions, including when someone is not being very genuine. The most dangerous part of this is when these cues aren't picked up uh, which can lead to miscommunication and internalized conflicts that eventually fester into resentments. One of the most common manifestations of this is not being honest with someone about the things that upset you. Being authentic is something that you can develop over time. I notice uh, that most people when they're young, myself included, try really, really hard to impress other people and mimic people that they idolize. This often comes from feelings of inadequacy or imposter syndrome. Instead of being vulnerable or authentic about their experience, they try to cover it up because they want to be perceived as someone who knows it all and uh, has everything put together. And let's be honest, nobody's got everything put together. One example of how this manifested to myself is in team meetings when I was uh, running a startup. And in the beginning, when I was first starting out, I would always try to present like I had everything figured out, like I knew what I was talking about, like everything in the company was going on track. And that got okay results. But when I really started being vulnerable with my companies and saying, hey, here's what's going well, here's what's not going so well, and we need to figure out. That's what really rallied people to, number one, trust me, and number two, find a solution to our problems. Which leads me to lesson number two, be open and vulnerable. Uh, now, I've spoken about this before in my video on fake friends, which you should go check out. But the best way to make new friends and connect with people is to be open and vulnerable about your experience. When you start talking to someone, it's always good to start from the place of what are the things that unite us instead of viewing them through prejudices or judgments off the bat. View every conversation with everyone as an opportunity to learn, no matter who you're talking to. The willingness to be vulnerable is often seen as a weakness, but actually is strength, especially when it comes to building genuine connections. And Brene Brown writes on this beautifully in her book, The Power of Vulnerability. Don't run away from difficult conversations and emotions. I used to do this a lot and it had pretty bad consequences. And whenever I was worried about having a direct conversation that was, I felt like was going to be tough, because it would bring up difficult emotions in the other person and I was someone who's very conflict avoidant, I would just try to push it off. Uh, instead, I started to embrace it and just say, hey, I'm gonna have this conversation. I'm gonna write out what I'm gonna say beforehand. I'm going to be super direct about my parts of responsibility for this. And for myself, even though it's gonna be difficult, I know I'll survive it and I'm just gonna be able to sit with that difficult emotion of anxiety or whatever I'm feeling about bringing this up and breathe. When I embraced having difficult conversations, it made my life that much easier. Number three, be direct, be concise, and just communicate without all the fluff. Time is your most valuable asset and that's true of anyone you're talking to as well. I try to incorporate this as much as possible into my writing and speaking. Every word that I use, I try to have intention and purpose around it. And it's very important to me to communicate my thoughts and emotions as succinctly as possible. Practicing this will make people think you're someone who is powerful and measured. Especially when I'm writing, communicating my ideas in an active voice helps me communicate with authority and weight. Number four, be helpful. Developing this mindset and approach is the best way to build trust with someone. Whenever I'm talking to my friends or people I've just met, I try to look for ways that I can support them. 
This doesn't mean I'm trying to constantly butt my way into every aspect of their lives, but communicating to them that I'm going to be someone who will be there uh, whenever they need is very reassuring. And it's something that builds connection. Number five, the most important thing that a good communicator can do has nothing to do with speaking. It's actually listening. Being a, the best speaker in the world doesn't make you an effective communicator or leader. The ability to make other people feel heard and respected is especially important and one of those core skill sets, especially when it comes to conflict resolution. All human beings out there really just want to be heard. And if you can make someone feel like they're heard, they're going to feel connected to you and they're going to be more receptive to your ideas. All right, guys, those were the lessons. I hope you found them helpful. Comment below on which lesson you liked best and how you've used it in practice. And don't forget to own that YouTube algorithm by smashing like and hitting the subscribe button and watching this video all the way to the end, which I think you've just done. All right, thank you, and I'll see you guys in the future. Later.